two. And I just want to tell everybody how much I appreciate you and I honor you and you and your family and, and you and who you are in Jesus and with us and believing with us and standing with us and, and all the things that nobody knows about but that who you are and how you pray with us and believe God to move and to do. I just thank you. So may God honor you. First Corinthians chapter 2. Look at verse 5. We're going to pick it up in the middle of the statement here. That your faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. That our faith should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. May we not be guilty of being duped by the, the rhetoric of our age. Does that make sense? The rhetoric of our age. That which people have figured out how to say that gets people going. How to word things, how to how to get a service. Y'all know what I'm talking about. There's certain your know, phrases and and ad, adages that that can be said, and man, it gets it gets people going. May we not be found guilty of following that, but be found guilty of following faith in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Not the verbiage of a man, but in the power of God. Verse six. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. No, the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Everybody asks, what's, what's going to happen? It's all going to come to nothing. Yes. That's what's going to happen. Jesus is going to return sometime. I don't know when. I don't know what. what. I don't have a clue. But he is going to come back. Is it going to work? Is it going to get worse? Well, according to the Bible, it's going to wax worse and worse until the end. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, put your bootstraps on. Get ready. It's going to get worse, right? Mm -hmm. Prepare. Do your best. And here's the thing, man. As the Spirit of God leads you, as the Spirit of God speaks, be obedient. If, and I've said it before. If you're walking through Walmart, God tells you to buy a bag of charcoal, buy a bag of charcoal. Yeah. Period. That's, that's, it's that simple. Do what the Holy Spirit leads you. Do not follow the wisdom of man. Yeah. And I'm telling you right now, we live in such a time where there is such confusion abounding around us and so many opinions out there of where we are and what's going on and where we're headed and what's going to take place. This is what I do know. We're going to be faithful to Jesus, and if we're blessed to wake up in the morning, we're going to be faithful to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Come on. End of it. Do we use wisdom? Yes. Is God going to give us wisdom to those that ask? Yes. How much is he going to give? Liberally. And if you don't have enough, you keep asking Make sense? Look, I don't know what's ahead of us, but I know this. Even as Paul said, the angel of the Lord stood before me and told me we're going to be okay, but it's going to be hard. Yeah. And I believe that's where we are. Yeah. I believe we're in an Heraclodon storm that, like Paul was in where it just doesn't, it doesn't stop. It's just on us. And, and you got to stay in the presence of Jesus. You got to stay with God, and you got to. It may not go the way we want it to go, but the angel of the Lord is with us. God has not left us. He did not forsake us. Again, you may be lonely, and you may feel by yourself, but you're not. You've never felt the loneliness that Jesus felt, because you've never experienced what Jesus experienced. Jesus had never experienced what sin was, but it was placed on him. And that father turning from him think you don't know what that's like because you've always been pursued by him. I'm just saying, the faithfulness of God is not going to leave us. In, in this age that we live in, the rulers of this age, they're coming to nothing. We don't speak among... The wisdom among the, those of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, they are coming to that which we fight against will come to nothing, but we're still not there yet. We're still in a fight. The enemy is after you. I sit here and listen to your testimonies. I listen to your story and everything out there just hurt you as well. And it's trying to destroy you. I don't care how many years you've been serving Jesus. I don't care how many years you've been married. Would y'all say this weekend to be 57? The enemy's trying to destroy their marriage. Absolutely. Well, that ain't going to happen now. Says who? Well, they've been married 57 years. 
And the enemy's trying to destroy them just as much as he's trying to destroy my marriage and their marriage and their marriage and their marriage. Yeah. Right or wrong? As much, just as much as he's trying to kill, he's trying to steal, he's trying to destroy, but it's going to come to nothing, but we're not there yet. Well, he was already disarmed and made a public spectacle. I agree, but he's still out there doing what he does, trying to destroy you. Be alert and be on your guard. Yes. Your enemy is out there plotting on you right now. He, is, he, is, he, he knows you better than you do. Yes. He knew your forebears. He knew what your forebears dealt with. My father-in-law is here tonight. His forebears, the enemy fought them. The enemy has fought him. That is his offspring. He knows what she's going to deal with because what her forebears dealt with. That generational stuff. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. He's plotting on them because he knows what the grandfathers dealt with. The grandfathers, both of them are here. His. The enemy knows what they struggled with. Y'all following me? Yes. He's in a war. This guy right here is in a war for his soul, for his life, for eternity. She is in a war for her eternity. So are you. Don't stop fighting. Amen. You better get you some grit and you better hang on to yourself because this ain't near about over. Yes. My grandmother's here who's 97. I don't know when her race will be over, but until that day, she's got to keep fighting. She don't get to lay down and quit. She doesn't, she doesn't get that opportunity until her last breath leaves her physical body and she's in the presence of Jesus. Then her race is run. Then it's over for her. But until that day, she's got to continue to love Jesus, be found in the way of righteousness, and do all the things that the Word of God tells us. Yes. Right or wrong? Right. But I'm telling you, they're coming to nothing, but we're not there. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God. What do we speak? Or this verse right here. What are you supposed to speak? The wisdom of God in mystery. The hidden wisdom of which God ordained before the ages for our glory. Verse 8. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for had they known, they would never have not have crucified the Lord of glory. I love that verse. The enemy thinks he's smart, and, but had he known, he would never have crucified the Lord of glory. I know a lot of people in this room don't know who <laughs> Carmen was, but Carmen had a song, you know, talking about the resurrection and what all happened. And I believe some of that probably was about the way that went down. He's, he thought he had won. He thought he had won. He did. According to this, he thought he had he done. He had. And Jesus says, the keys, buddy. Yes. Not buddy, but enemy. Give me the keys. <laughs> right? And he ascended out of the pit with what? The keys of death, hell, and the grave. And he ever lives to make intercession for you. Thank you. Blessed be the name of the yes. Lord. Amen. Verse 9, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor has ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love. I love this verse. Because your and I don't mean you in this room, okay? But when I say your, I mean that which is out there. Your opinion of me is not God's opinion of me. Your thoughts about me is not God's thoughts about me because it doesn't matter how great you think I am or how bad you think I am. It's nothing compared to what God thinks about me. Amen. No eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has prepared for who? Me that love him. That's me. What's coming? God has prepared for me. That's just awesome to me. All the struggle, all the fight, all of the rejection, all of the yes and all the no, it pales in comparison to what's coming. Amen. For what God has prepared for those that love him. I want to ask you right now, do you love Jesus? Yes. Yes. I know the answer, but do you, with every fiber of your being, do you love him? Yes. Your spirit, your soul, your body, the very essence of your life. Like you can't live without him. The world can crumble. The world can go. Jesus remains. Yes. The love of God. I, that's one of my favorite songs. The love of God. Mm. That old hymn. The love of God. I'm telling you. Everything pales in comparison to the love of God. 57 years married. 
The love they have for each other is deeper than, than, than some have experienced because of the amount of time they put up with each other. Just say that's a long time. Yeah. It is. It's a long time. Mm -hmm. But it pales in comparison to the love God has for them. Yeah. Period. Mm -hmm. As much as 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 you can love somebody, it pales in comparison to what God's love is toward you. Mm -hmm. He really does love us. He really does. He, he really has good thoughts about us. Things he has prepared for those who love him. Verse 10. But God has what? Revealed. What did he reveal? Through his spirit. He revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Okay. Start that verse at the end. What is the spirit searching out? What's the last part of that verse 10 say? The deep, the deep, things, deep things of God. God. Who's he revealing, revealing the deep things of God to? Us. The first part of that verse says he's revealed them to us by his spirit, through his spirit. What? The deep things, for the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. Verse 11, for what man knows, for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. But the end of verse 10 says the spirit of God is revealing them to whom? The deep things of God. Not to a preacher, not to a prophet, not to somebody that writes and has written 35 books about the deep things. Of, I'm talking about you. Amen. I'm talking about intimacy. I'm talking about the depths of, not even, not even the revelation of this right here. Not this. I'm talking about intimacy of relation. As much as they know each other, they know each other's favorite color, or they should. They know each other's favorite, you know, their their the drink, you know, Coke, whatever it is, tea, cappuccino, whatever it may be, favorite food, favorite not food, favorite, 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 but yet there's a depth that goes beyond that. That's indescribable. You can't even put it into words. There's just a an understanding and a depth yes. that I know my wife. I can tell when something, and she'll look at me and go, no, I'm, I'm not, it happened yesterday. I was like, what is wrong? Nothing. Bull. <laughs> I'm okay. Okay, here we go. Let's first layer off. What next? <laughs> I'm okay. No, and okay is not the word I'm looking for. <clears throat> what is wrong? God knows you better than you do. He does. He knows you. He knows. You. I'm telling you, I can look at her and I can tell by her physical. My kids can tell you things about me and her just by the way we can be in a conversation and they can tell how things are moving just by physical reaction. I can fool you, but I can't fool them. That's right. First of all, they're part of me. They came out of me. Who they are, their DNA network is made out of me and, and she over there, right? Yes. But yet they live with me for every waking hour just about for umpteen years and they know me. Yes. God knows me greater than they do. Mm -hmm. He knows when you're saying, he knows when you're going, he knows when you're lying to everybody else by acting like everything's okay and it's not. He knows what's going on at school. He knows what's going on at home. He knows and he loves you in spite of and I'm telling you, and he's got a plan. Do not let life ball up on you and take you out, even mentally, because we get so tied up in life and job and situation and family and all the things of, of life that I'm telling you, there's an intimacy with God that God is trying to bring us into that is greater than anything you've ever known, no matter what you've experienced. Amen. Let me say it this way. Jesus experienced a deeper relationship and intimacy the night he was betrayed in the Garden of Gethsemane than most of us have ever known. That wrangle that happened with him and the Father, mm -hmm. you realize your eternity was hanging in the balance right there. Redemption 
was the next day for us. Like that next three and a half days that was about to transpire from him giving his life to his resurrection, that whole process right there was hanging in the balance in the garden. But yet not my will, but your will be done. The Spirit of God knew what was up. The Spirit of God has to reveal things. And I will say it this way. If God don't reveal it, you don't know. You can dupe me. I can dupe you. But if God reveals, then it's then, then the duping's over. I have prayed for, for since 1998, 1999. God, don't let me see people for people. Let me see what you see. Yes. I want to know if somebody's lying to me. I want to know. I want to see spiritually what's going on around me so that I'm not duped by this. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Because God knows the heart. Yes, he does. God knows the heart. And here's the thing. The Spirit of God will reveal it if you'll ask him. I've, I've said this so many times. It's become a, a, a joke in our house that it doesn't matter what it is. They'll ask me, like, Aaron, they were having a reveal party, and, you know, is it a boy, is it a girl, is it a boy, is it a girl? And they all looked at me and said, what is it? I said, I didn't ask, and I'm not going to ask. Because they know if I ask, the Holy Ghost will tell me. I mean, it, 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 presence, it doesn't matter. I could tell you what was in each box. Because I would ask. I finally just stopped asking. I'm not going to ask because I won't be surprised. It just, the Holy Ghost knows all things. And it's most aggravating if you're trying to give something to somebody and they already know what it is. <laughs> and I noticed that after <coughs> years. I'm like, fine, I'll be surprised. And they'll still look at me like, you know, don't you? I don't know. Yeah, right. Because the Holy, does the Holy Ghost know? Yes. yes. Does the Holy Ghost know? Yes. Will He reveal it to you? Yes. If you ask. He knows all things, even the depths of the heart of God. And if you'll ask Him the depths of the heart of God and listen, guess what? He's going to reveal to you. Not just trivial things of life, but the depths of what... Did, did you ask Him today, God, what's on your heart? What's causing you pain what, what's causing you grief? Not in the American church by what I see, you know, because biblically we were away. No, all that has its place and that's all fine and well. But did you ask him, what do you think about the election today? Who do you want to win, God? Not who do I think based off of what they stand for. Who do you want in power? Because what are you trying to accomplish? Because you just assume that it's supposed to be so and so that lines up with the way you believe. What if God's trying to do something else? What if you got the president God wanted you to have right now? Well, he didn't have the standards. What if God is trying to do something you don't know about? And now you've got your mouth all over and you're actually speaking against God. Because there are those scriptures in there that you know he does put in power and he does take out. And you better be careful because what if that is God's anointed right now and you putting your mouth all over it? There's no way because he just believed that there you go again because you think you know everything because you're an American. <laughs> God help us. How many of us speak every day against the will of God and don't even realize it? Yeah. How many of us speak against people and what God's trying to do through their lives, in their lives, and with their lives, and you're speaking against them that you have no clue. We were talking today, Gracie, and we were sitting here bantering back and forth, and, and she quoted about the same time. I'm not out here. I'm just, we about the same time, we both said, every idle word, you know, that you're going to stand and give account for? Yeah. Remember? This is the kind of stuff I think that that's talking about. Is you're putting your mouth on stuff and you have no clue about it. 
those words, you're going to answer for Because you're actually speaking against God. Even though, well, it doesn't line up with what I believe. Did you ask God what he wanted? Hey, Maybe he wants vile in there right now because what he's trying to bring about in certain lives and trying to do. Maybe he's trying to <coughs> circumvent something you don't know about. Maybe God sends a, a king over there called Saul and says, hey, wipe out the Amalekites over here and, and the Agai over here and wipe out all these people with King Agag. But he doesn't be obedient. And now here we are generations later and we got a lady named Esther who's the queen and Mordecai, her, her uncle, who's dealing with a guy named Haman who's an Agagite. And if this guy over here these years before had done the will of God, maybe Esther would never have been dealing. We would never even know who Esther is and Mordecai is, who Haman was. But because this guy's not obedient, are y'all getting me? Yeah. But yet, well, that can't be the will of God. Who says? Did you ask the Spirit of God about the situation? Well, I'm going to pray this. Did you ask God how to pray about it? This is where most of us better default into the tongues thing because you don't know how to pray. But do you realize there is a way to pray by the Spirit in your known language if you ask the Spirit how to pray? I, I, the way I read the Corinthians over there, I am a firm believer. You can pray by the Spirit in tongues and you can pray by the Spirit in understanding. The way I read it. Because Paul was like, you better... Give me five words in understanding because mm -hmm. it's still by the same spirit. Yes. Right? Amen. Yeah. I'm telling you, the spirit of God desires to reveal. What verse are we in, Titus? Mm -hmm. huh? Ten. Ten? Oh, we got to go. For what? Verse 11. For what man knows the things of the spirit? Oh, we read that one. Except that the spirit of the man which is in him, even so no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. You know how many of us think we're doing right and think we're on the plan of God, but you never even stop to ask him? Because we think by the world, and if you keep reading these verses right here, you'll find, look, look at verse 13. These things we also speak not in words of man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Verse 14. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You try to speak spiritual things with carnal-minded people, they're not going to get it. It is going to do nothing but cause argumentative situations. They cannot get it. They cannot you have to get spiritual things by the Spirit to a spirit that's open to the spiritual things of God. Mm -hmm. A carnal-minded person is not going to get what the Spirit of God is trying to say. It's just not going to happen. Right. Let me tell you something. <coughs> the news, all they, all they report is things that's already happened. Mm -hmm. God don't talk about things that's already happened. God talks about what's about to happen. He's going to tell what's coming. He's not a historian. He is, but you understand. He is telling, he's foretelling what's going to take place. Just like the little things in life, Abella testified a minute ago, somebody bought her gas and, and, and bought her her meal this week and it just blessed her because sometimes we need that and a good father knows that. Yes. And he puts somebody in your path that is hearing from him by the Spirit and goes, hey, let me pay that gas. So, oh, and hey, let me feed you over here. Oh, and hey, let me do this. Oh, and hey, here's another opportunity. And God's using multiple people to bring about in your life the answers to the very desires of your heart and your prayers. Because here's the reality. She's, she's, she's saving for us. She's got a goal. She's working toward a goal over here. She's trying to save money for this goal, Right? She can pray. God, give me money. God gives her the ability to get it. Yeah. 
What most of us want is just somebody to walk up and bam, there it is. Well, that, that works. And, and she's available for that if God speaks to somebody. <laughs> I can assure you. Right? Oh, yeah. Choo -choo. Right here, here I am, Lord. Yeah. <laughs> but in the meantime, he's taught my hands how to work. She's cleaning houses. She's doing the thing. And it all started right here. Sweep this way. No, no, no. You need to sweep this way. You ever watch somebody sweep that don't know how to sweep? Yeah. Yeah. And they lose half of their stuff and they didn't do, hardly do anything when they swept because they never learned how to sweep? Mm -hmm. Y'all never seen anybody do that stuff, have you? It's most aggravating. <laughs> or they, they wipe something down and they don't know how to wipe it and all they know how to do is streak it? Yes. <laughs> For some of us, that's an issue. <laughs> and we're learning yes. they've been cleaning y'all every Saturday or Fridays typically this house gets clean for Saturday yes. yep. and then it gets just so y'all know this floor gets gets vacuumed or swept right before everybody gets here and as soon as all this gets up I'm normally the one I vacuum it again after everybody leaves it's just part of the process yeah all the chairs get moved. We all have our place and know what we're doing. And somebody's doing the dishes. Somebody's doing boom, boom, boom. And in 15 minutes after y'all have left, the house is put back together. And all my little piles come back out to the table. <laughs> all the little things that, that are normal house. Y'all yeah. have normal house? Y'all have the benefit of not having to put that stuff up. Some of us don't have that benefit. Some of y'all don't have those little piles. But we got our little drawers. Yeah. Where's this Here's guy? My drawer right here. <laughs> Back in there. We all have our little. God does too. God has things He wants to share. God has things He wants to reveal, and He's looking for somebody that's interested in what He's interested in. Are you interested? And what's on his heart? Titus and I got to go to Arkansas and hunt and do. And we we had those two hour drives there and two hours back and going up to work on the cabin with Judah and doing the things. We had those father and son talks. And even today, we were having one of those talks. We pulled up, wasn't done. Lillian come out of the house. And we weren't done talking. So we turned the truck off and we just sat there and finished our conversation. I'm pouring into him. I looked at him the other day and I said, I said, I'm gonna treat you like I did Abella. Because I looked at Abella four years ago, roughly, when she was getting ready to go to, to CFNI. It was her senior year. She was 17. I looked at her and said, you're not ready. It hurt her feelings. I said, but I'm going to help you get ready because yeah. I'm daddy and I see things in you that we need to shore up before you get into that wolf pack. Mm -hmm. Right? Remember this? Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm going to help you if you let me. If you let me, I'm going to speak into you and I'm going to help you bring those things up where they need to be so that you don't, you don't get eaten when you, once you step on that campus. Yeah. Right or wrong, Bells? Mm -hmm. And we, over the months here, we went. And I would bring up stuff. We'd sit right here. She would sit here. I would stand here. And here we go into teaching mode. Boom, 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 boom. He and I, we do it all the time. Today, we had a conversation about land and things. And, I, and I'm teaching him 30 years from now what you need to be doing. What you need to be doing. Because that's my job. I'm daddy. In the same way, that I'm revealing the Holy Spirit is wanting to reveal to you. He's wanting to tell you things that you don't know about, things you hadn't thought of. He looks at me today and says, why don't I know this by now? Because it wasn't time. Right? Why, why am I just now? Even Gracie was talking about the things she's experienced and I didn't know. I didn't know about this stuff. I, we were talking checkbooks and things this morning and she's like, I didn't know these things. Well, you didn't need to know these things until now. Mm -hmm. 
And now that it's time to learn and, and to develop and to save and to do and to do what? So I had to figure it out. <laughs> and some of that you will figure out and it's okay. But I'm right here and I'm trying to let figure out. And the Holy Ghost is trying to let you figure, but there comes a time when he goes, okay, yeah. now do this. Because you've been kicking trying to do this and it's not working. Try this. Somebody wrote me yesterday going, I know the answer to this. I mean, I woke up yesterday morning and I'm praying, I'm doing my thing and at five or something, I believe it was, here come this text. It's, I know the right answer. I know what I'm da-da-da-da-da-da, but I need you to stand with me, da-da-da-da-da. I wrote back a short answer. He fires back, da 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 A few hours later, it was already done. And all I told him was, you've got to give it to God and get away from it and let God handle it. You've got to verbalize it and get out of the way. And guess what? God handled it and boom, here we are. God loves you and he desires to reveal and to do even greater than you've ever seen him do in your life and with your life and through your life. I mean, don't look at this and go, man, my best years are behind me. No, God is wanting to move today in you and through you. It doesn't matter what you did yesterday. What matters is there's somebody God's wanting to touch today. There's somebody out there that you are supposed to be reaching, that you are, God's going to use you to be a father, to be a mother, to bring love, to bring correction, to bring whatever it is, to answer their need in their life. That's what the Spirit of God does. He uses people. Y'all were talking earlier about the body. We're the body. God uses bodies. Go be the body. Go, I'm, I'm just telling you, let God reveal and do, but you're not going to get it through the, the, the physical way of thinking. You've got to get it through the Spirit of God. About his, his opinion on a thing. Look at verse 16. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. I immediately think of Job. You know, were you there? Did God ask you your opinion when he laid the foundations of the earth? Did God ask you? Has God asked you your, your opinion on what he's doing in the political world out there right now? You know, Israel. Everybody's got our opinions. What's God's opinion on this yes, matter? Yes, yes, yes. Well, I know what the Bible says. Have you asked him what his opinion is of where we are right now in his scheme of life, of where he's going and the ends and all the things that he's doing? What's he trying to accomplish right now with this whole debacle in Israel? Or do you just have your opinion? Because we think we know what's right. Because we read the Bible, we think we know. Have you asked him his opinion? What are we doing, God? What are you desiring to do? How do you want me to pray into this? Or do you just pray? Am I making any sense to anybody? All this that's going on around us and the, the, the preachers and the people falling into sin, are you just putting your mouth on it because you think you know something? Or did you actually ask God how to pray for them, whoever they are? Because we all can immediately think of somebody that has fallen into sin that was in the pastoral position. And you don't have to go very far or very long ago. Locally, we got it. We got enough to. We we don't have to go very far. How do you pray for those people? I know they fell into sin. Everybody knows they did. How are you praying for them? God smack them. Little Bella's back there. <laughs> <laughs> That's how most of us think. Is there? Because if you pray God's speed upon somebody, according to John, and God wasn't on board, you're, you're just as cursed as they are. If you tell them God's speed and God wasn't in the situation, did you pause long enough to say, hey, God, how do I approach this? What are we doing?
Did you ask him his opinion? First Corinthians chapter 10. First Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 6. Now these things became our example. To the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Verse 7. First Corinthians 10 verse 7. And do not become idolaters as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Nor complain as some of them also complained and were destroyed by the destroyer. And then he goes, verse 11, all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Verse 12, therefore let him who thinks he stands take heed, lest he fall. Be careful what you put your mouth on. Go back to verse 11, Titus. All these things happen. What things happen? Everything he had just talked about, this idolatry and this sexual immorality <coughs> those who were tempted and those that fell into sin and all these things, they were written down for whose sake? Uh -huh. Mine. Mine. Uh -huh. Me. All these people, they did what they did. God recorded it so I could read it to help me not do what they did. The proverb says, a wise man learns from another man's. What he did wrong, I was supposed to learn from it. Sodom and Gomorrah, first thing we think of is the sexual perversion. But if you go read it, there was a lot more wrong with Sodom and Gomorrah than just that. Yes. That was one thing out of their pride, their Eric, their, there was a whole lot of things. With you. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with Roger? A lot. What's the Spirit of God know that even Roger don't know? What's the Spirit of God know about Roger that even Dusty don't know? The reality is God is trying to work it out of Roger and in Roger so that when he stands before God, he doesn't give account for those things because he repented of it and he changed it. Have you asked him lately what's wrong with you? God, let your word, let the mirror of your word reveal me to me. Yes. The darkest, blackest, vileness of who I am, let it reveal it to me and let it convict me. Yes. God, I want to be convicted. God, I want to deal with it on this side of eternity so I don't stand in front of you and be ashamed. God, I want to deal with me now. When's the last time you cried that? Not just said it, but just cried it out. Well before God, God, deal in my heart. Take your scalpel to my heart and rend it. Let me deal with it. Reveal it to me so that I may be cleansed. Spirit of God, you know me. Reveal me, not to my neighbor, not to my spouse, to me. Let me see the vileness of my own heart so that I may repent. Verse 10 says, Don't complain. Some of them also complained and were destroyed. Discontentment destroyed them. <clears throat> discontentment. Do you know how many of us deal with the same discontentment? I want a better church. I want a larger this. I want a that. I want a bigger bill. I want a I, discontent. I'm not content. Well, I hear you. What about God? Is he content with you? Is he happy with the way you are? Are you good with the way you are? You really think you're going to hear well done? Well done. 
I'm not your judge, but there is one. And I got to stand in front of him too. And it scares the, the jeebies out of me. Because mm -hmm. he's holy and everything about him is holy. And only that which is holiness will be allowed into his presence. May God help us. Yep. May you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to you, to your family, to your life. God, we just invite your Spirit to speak to us corporately, as families, as individuals, God. Speak to each of us in a way that we understand, in a way that we get it. God, we are asking you, I'm asking you, God, speak to my heart. Reveal me to me so that I may repent, so that I may deal with it, God, so that I may know where, where I am not pleasing you, where my attitude, my thoughts, my, my processes are not pleasing to you, God, where my time, my, my, the things that I've allowed to creep in that I don't even realize it, God. We're asking you, Spirit of the living God, speak to us, reveal to us, consume us with your presence. Let your glory invade upon us, God. We're just asking you, cleanse our hearts and purify our minds, God. Cleanse our hands so that we may be pure before you, that we may stand before the living God and give honor and praise and adoration to the Lamb that was slain because you are worthy and there is none like unto you. There's none holy like unto you. There's no one glorious less like unto you. God, I honor you and I'm asking you, Spirit of God, Reveal the depths of your heart to us. Reveal yourself to us, God. Take the coal off the altar and cleanse our lips, God. Purify us and we will be pure. Wash us and we will be whiter than snow. Purity be among us. Robes of righteousness. Not vain glory and not puffed up, but the realness of your spirit and the realness of your presence, God. Be mightily upon you. May the Lord of glory bless you. May the Lord of glory keep you. May the countenance of the radiance of the presence of God be mightily upon each of you. As you go your way and as you go through your days, may the Lord go before you. May he be your front side and rear guard. May the wall of the fire of the Lord be encamped about around you. In Jesus' name. Yes, who me and found me. Just by a bottle of the one world. Jesus is king. And the devil is still a liar. Y'all be blessed in Jesus' name. May you have.